All right, now we're going to multiply some algebraic expressions. We're going to kind of build up from the simplest um, scenarios to the more complicated ones. And the simplest scenarios are ones that we kind of already know how to do. It's um, uh, an application of our rules of exponents. So if there's no addition or subtraction happening in either of the factors, um, then we're just going to multiply the coefficients and use rules of exponents. So um, I'm going to write out an, an intermediate step here that a lot of people might skip, and it's okay to skip. Um, but I, you know, you can you can rewrite the order of factors um, in a product because multiplication is commutative. So three times negative four times c to the fifth times c squared. This gives us negative twelve, and then uh, adding those exponents c to the seventh. A lot of people would skip that middle step, and most of the time I skip that middle step because I know I just need to multiply those coefficients and use rules of exponents to multiply c to the fifth times c squared. Doing the same thing here. Um, I've got negative 2 times negative 9, and then let's see, I've got a factor of a. I've got a b squared times b. I've got y cubed times y to the fifth. And now simplifying this product, we get positive 18 a b cubed y to the eighth. And one more here, I've got three factors. Um, I'm going to be really careful here because uh, in this one, I'm I'm raising one of those factors to the third power, so I have to use that rule of exponents that says I can distribute an exponent over a product. So I've got 2 cubed x squared cubed y cubed times a negative xy. Now I'm going to grab my coefficients first, so 3 times 8 times negative 1. Then, uh, let's see, I've got x to the 6th here, times x, times y cubed, times y. And overall, now I've got a negative 24, x to the 7th, y to the 4th. Right, in our next scenario, we're going to look at uh, what happens if I have addition or subtraction happening in one of the factors, uh, but not the other one. And we're going to use, again, I can, you know, we kind of already know how to do this scenario too. We're going to use the distributive property. Um, and then uh, once we use the distributive property, we're looking at products like we just were working with, um, where we just need to multiply coefficients and use rules of exponents. So I'm going to take this factor of negative 3b here, and I'm going to distribute it. And we get negative 3b times 2b squared minus negative 3b times a. So this gives us, in the beginning here, a negative 6b cubed. Then this will be a plus 3ab. Um, next, using the distributive property here, 5st times 3st squared minus 5st times 2sw. This will give us 15s squared t cubed minus 10s squared tw. And one more here. I'm going to distribute the factor of negative 2x uh, over this uh, factor with three terms. Now addition and subtraction inside the parentheses. Negative 2x times 3xy squared minus negative 2x times 2x squared y plus negative 2x times y squared. And then I'm going to simplify each of these uh, products here. Um, so negative 6 x squared y squared. This will be a positive 4 
x cubed y minus 2xy squared. All right, and our last scenario is what we do if we have addition and subtraction um, in both of our factors. So uh, you might be familiar with the acronym FOIL, uh, which can help us multiply two binomials if I only have two terms in each. Um, and FOIL stands for first, outer, inner, last. So first you multiply the two first terms, then the two outer terms, and the two inner terms, and the two last terms, and you add them together. And FOIL works pretty well, and if you have experience with that and you're used to it, and that's just what you're comfortable with, feel free to use it. I'm going to show you a different way to look at these products. Um, it's a way that I like because it is not, you know, unlike FOIL, it's not limited to the scenario where I have just two terms. Um, what I'm going to show you will work regardless of how many terms we might be adding or subtracting in each factor. Uh, so x minus 2 times x plus 3, I'm going to make a little table or a little grid here. And across the top, I'm going to put the terms of one factor, x and negative 2. And then down the side, I'm going to put uh, the terms of the other factor, x and a positive 3. So I've got now four positions. And in each of these spots, I'm going to just multiply the, the row and the column. So in this first spot, I've got x times x, which is x squared. Then I have, let's see, the x row and the negative 2 column. That's negative 2x. Moving down in the next row, I've got x times 3, or 3x. And my last spot here, 3 times negative 2 is negative 6. You'll notice that we have like terms. Um, on this diagonal here, and so when you put this together, right after we do the, the you know, make this grid and find these individual products, the the values that appear in the boxes, those are the terms that are in the product. So this is x squared minus 2x plus 3x minus 6, and I have these like terms in the middle, negative 2x plus 3x gives us positive x, so x squared plus x minus 6. Um, if you notice in the beginning, you know, I said, oh, we've got these like terms, and a lot of the time I'll just say, okay, those combine, and they give me a, a positive x, and then I don't bother necessarily writing out uh, the whole um, addition at first. I'll just kind of simplify as I go. Um, so there's an example where we use that grid, and, and that's the tool that I'm going to use when I find all these products. Uh, in part B, we have x minus 5 squared. Now you want to be really careful. I know we've already learned this before, um, and, but I'm going to say it again because people always want to do this. We cannot, we cannot distribute an exponent over addition or subtraction. So this is not going to be x squared minus 5 squared. On the other hand, um, rather, I'm just going to remember, what does it mean to square something? I'm going to multiply it by itself. So this is x minus 5 times x minus 5. And once I write it that way, I could say, oh yeah, I'm good. here I'm going to just make my little grid or use FOIL, whatever you like. So inside we've got x times x is x squared. Uh, staying in the top row, negative 5x. Moving down to the bottom row here, negative 5x and then positive 25. I can see that I have like terms along that diagonal, which add up to a negative 10x. So this product is x squared minus 10x plus 25. Um, note, in particular, it is not equal to x squared minus 25, right? We cannot distribute an exponent over addition or subtraction. All right, in this next example, we really see where this grid has um, an advantage over FOIL. Uh, FOIL, as an acronym, does not apply to this product. FOIL really is limited to a scenario where I have just two terms in each of the factors, but here we have three terms in one of our factors. Um, so I'm going to write out the terms of, of that factor across the top. It doesn't matter which ones you put up top and which ones you put down the side. 
you'll get the same result in the end. Okay, moving across the top, 5s times s squared is 5s cubed, 5s times st is 5s squared t, and 5s times negative t squared is negative 5st squared. Along the bottom row here now, uh, s squared times negative 3t is minus 3s squared t. I tend to stick with uh, writing the variable factors in alphabetical order, but you don't have to. Um, next, negative 3t times st is negative 3st squared. And last, we have a positive 3t cubed. Now notice, look what happens here, much like we saw in the last uh, couple of examples. I have like terms that are arranged on these diagonals. So I have this first diagonal here. Um, is the s squared t like term, so this gives us overall a positive 2 s squared t, and then next uh, is st squared, and we have negative 5 and negative 3, so that's negative 8 st squared, which gives us overall now 5 s cubed plus 2 s squared t minus 8 st squared plus 3t cubed. All right, and uh, we got one more here. So 2x minus y cubed. Again, uh, you know what I'm going to say probably. We cannot distribute an exponent over addition or subtraction. So what it means to cube something is I'm going to multiply it by itself three times. 2x minus y, 2x minus y, 2x minus y. Now that we're multiplying three things together, we're going to have to go, uh, come at this um, uh, in a couple of phases. So first, I'm going to just figure out, well, what is this product right here? I'm going to multiply two of them together. So 2x minus y, 2x minus y. So in the top row we have 4x squared and negative 2xy, negative 2xy, and in the last a positive y cubed, we could see again that we have like terms on this diagonal. So overall this product to begin with is 4x squared minus 4xy plus y cubed, and then I'm going to multiply that by 2x minus y, and we'll make a little uh, grid for that one. Uh, um, across the top row, we have 8x cubed, then a negative 8x squared y, a positive 2xy cubed, or xy, uh, oh, I just noticed I made an, an error there before, uh, going back to this first table here, negative y times negative y is a, is a positive y squared. So that's going to filter through here. And there. Okay. In the bottom row, we got 4x squared y. That'll be a negative 4x squared y. Then a positive 4xy squared and then a negative y cubed. Again, we see that we have like terms. There's my x squared y terms here, and that gives me a total of negative 12 x squared y. And then here's my x y squared terms, giving me a total of positive 6 x y squared. 
Overall, this product is equal to 8x cubed minus 12x squared y plus 6xy squared minus y cubed.